Hi everyone, welcome. This is our live Alia Science Fulman session. We are so happy and glad to be here. Also to thank Artsenu to build this gathering, virtual gathering before the World Science Congress, this pre-Congress of Artsenu. It's a, a, a huge opportunity to connect everyone in this kind of uh, virtual community building platform that we share. Today, the subject, Alia, how we face the ideological platform of the progressive liberal reform movement around the world, and especially how we real translate the progressive and reform values in Zionist concrete actions. That means for us, it's clear that to be a progressive reform liberal issue means to be Zionist. And we make here the clear distinction between criticizing the government of Israel, that it's possible because we are pluralistic, because we are free people, we are open mind people, and a government is a government. But everywhere, every time, we support the state of Israel. And Aliyah is not only a mainstream, Aliyah is a spiritual journey. And to share with all of you these ideas, this real, real commitment that we take around all the world, we will share with all of you a short video with our friend Techi Land, that is in the chair of the Aliyah Committee of the Israel Movement for Progressive Judaism. שלום לכולם, שמי אסתי לנג, ועליתי לארץ ב-1983 עם משפחתי מארגנטינה. עלייה לארץ היא תוצאה של תהליך שהחל כשהייתי בת 14, תהליך שכולל הקמת תנועת נוער מעודדת עלייה בארגנטינה בשם ישראל הצעירה. בגיל 28 נשואה ואימא לשתיים, הגעתי עם משפחתי לארץ חדשה. עד היום אני זוכרת את התחושות והרגשות שחוויתי בתקופה הזו. לפני כחמש עשרה שנה יסדתי קהילה רפורמית עם קבוצת עולים מדרום אמריקה, קהילת ידיד נפש בעיר כרמיאל, השוכנת בגליל המערבי. קהילה זו היא קהילה תומכת עלייה שכוללת בתוכה עולים ממדינות שונות ומגוונות. למרות תרבויות השונות והשפות הרבות הצליחה הקהילה לייצר לעצמה אופי מיוחד ומשפחתי. כיום אני לוקחת חלק בהנהלת התנועה הרפורמי בישראל ותפקידי הוא יושבת ראש של ועדת קליטת עלייה. תפקיד זו משמעותי עבורי עקב החוויה שעברתי שעבר, בדרך. תהליך הקליטה בארץ הוא תהליך לא פשוט. עולה פוגש שפה, תרבות ומציאות שונה מכל מה שמוכר לו. גם חלק הרגשי ישנם רגעים לא קלים שמגיעים לרוב עקב המרחק מהמשפחה המורחבת. אנו רוצים לכלול נקודה זו, תהליך הקליטה בארץ, כאתגר תנועתי, בו נצליח לתת לכל עולה שירצה להיות חלק מקהילה, ממשפחה ולהרגיש את השייכות. אנו כתנועה יכולים לסלול דרך ולהקל את התהליך עם פרויקטים ייחודיים לטובת העולה ולחברה הישראלית כולה. אנחנו בתחילת תהליך בבדיקת הקמת הפרויקט זו, הכולל חיפוש משאבים, הבנת הצרכים והדרכים המתאימות ביותר לביצוע התהליך. כעולה לשעבר כישראלית רפורמי, אני מתרגשת לייצג צעד כזה חשוב לתנועה בארץ ולכל יהודי התפוצות. בהזדמנות זו, רוצה לברך את נציגי הקונגרס הציוני ואת חברי ארצנו ברחבי העולם שמשתתפים בכנס זה, וכמובן את חברי הפאנל שמייצגים את הפסיפס המגוון שיוצר את עלייה לישראל. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שחיינו וקימנו והגיענו לזמן הזה. אמן. תודה רבה לכולם. אמן.
Amen, be amen. I remember very well when we have the big crisis in Argentina and ST start to push to welcome the Rome American Olim and to start to, to, to dream about the Edith Nefesh, a reformed community in Carmel. This is really touched me very, very close to my heart. And now, you know, it's the time to share not only words, good wishes, and uh, ideas. We need to, to connect to concrete, real people. Our panelists are true stories about reform Zionists and Alia uh, Folfet. We will start to present all of you and to share his uh, thoughts and experience with Nikki Brown. That is our Maskiran, Netzerol Ami. Welcome, Nikki. We are with you to share your thoughts, your experience, your vision. Hi, um, I'm Nikki. I am the Maskira of Netzer, so that means the chairperson of Netzer Olam Me, um, the branches of Netzer that exist all around the world. I am actually Australian, so I grew up in Netzer Australia, and that's really where my Aliyah journey began. And a big part of my experiences have been way before I made Aliyah 13 months ago, just over a year ago. Um, and they've really influenced my, influenced my time here and the process that I took to get here. So I grew up in Netzer, um, a very progressive ideological group of young people um, from very young ages, including young adults who are steering the whole ideological process that young people in our communities go on. And we would talk about Aliyah, we would talk about Zionism, Israel all the time, but we would talk about it in um, a few different ways. On one hand, we were talking about Aliyah as the highest expression of reform Zionism. And in other times, we were thinking very critically about Israel. We were looking at challenges that Israel faces, learning about the conflict, learning about Israel's history. And um, when you're being told that making Aliyah is the highest expression of reform Zionism, but at the same time, you're also criticizing Israel and looking at the ways that it's not perfect, it can be quite challenging as an individual. So I definitely grew up with that internal challenge throughout my journey. I um, participated in Schnapp Netzer, which is a gap year program provided by Netzer for um, all of the different Netzer branches. I spent one year living in Israel after I finished high school. And that's the moment when I felt a connection to Israel, which is the kind of connection which is unspoken and you don't teach people about. You learn about Zionism, you learn about Aliyah, you learn about the challenges, but you don't really, you can't teach people about that other kind of connection that you feel. So that's the time that I thought maybe, maybe I could make Israel home for me at some point in my life. So I went back to Australia and complete, completed my degree. And, um, and then this job in Netzer became available and I thought, well, if I'm gonna make Aliyah, I'm going to do it in the framework of this movement, which has supported me my entire life and continues to support me today. So my entire journey has been about Netzer, for Netzer, with Netzer, which has been really amazing. These internal challenges I face continue um, and probably will for the rest of my life. So um, I also want to share that that the meaningful part of making Aliyah in, in Netzer has come to be over the years, the exploration of spending a meaningful time in Israel rather than um, making Israel your home forever. So I'm very excited that I'm experiencing that now in my life and I'm also excited for what journeys are coming next. Okay, thank you, Nikki. We will come back to you with some of the inputs and questions of uh, the people that are around. And now we present all of you, Rebecca Flanders, that come from the US, a very active member of Ben Daniel. Please, Rebecca, we are with you. Great. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Um, I, uh, up until recently, was the executive producer for Center Stage, which is the uh, first uh, professional English-speaking theater in Israel, a really exciting endeavor that we'll hopefully get to continue once we can all be together again. Um, and I have quite the opposite story from Nikki. I did not grow up in the American reform movement. Um, I grew up with uh, 
uh, parents who were part of the conservative movement, but sort of high holiday Jews. We didn't, we weren't super involved. Um, I have some family here in Israel, which I came to visit when I was in college and I fell in love with the country and was always finding excuses to come back here. And uh, when I decided to get my master's degree, I decided to come to Tel Aviv University. And that was my first real opportunity to, to live here. Uh, so that's how I found Israel. And then after I made Aliyah, which was a very challenging uh, experience other than the first part, right? The part where they sign you up and you get on the airplane and you land in Ben Gurion, that part's easy, but the next part was hard. Um, I met my boyfriend, uh, now husband. Uh, his name is Shimon Smith. Probably somebody knows him. He's very, very involved in the movement and he brought me in. So actually the only reform movement I've ever known is the IMPJ. And um, through the IMPJ, through the reform movement and through Beit Daniel, which is I think the largest reform synagogue in Tel Aviv, um, I was given a sense of community, which was something, Rabbi, you mentioned in the beginning. I was given a place that felt uh, like it could be a home, and it was a place where I was meeting more Israelis because so much of my social circle from, from graduate school are Anglo. So I think, for me, that's the message, um, and that's the opportunity for the movement is to, to provide people like me who maybe didn't grow up in a movement a sense of community to, for Olim that come here that are progressive Jews with progressive values and pluralistic values, a place, uh, a place that they can engage and find community. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you for your work and for your testimony. Now we, we are traveling, have you say, around the world from Australia, the US, and now the FSU we have here with us Anna, that uh, is uh, coming to represent Ramat Gan, uh, Russian speakers, that is uh, so important uh, input, the uh, transformation in our reform movement with the, uh, for not only the former Soviet Union, I can say that was the great vision of our rabbi and teacher, Rabbi Dick Hirsch, that he really believed that two main goals, the World Union for Progressive Judaism, when he created and supported the Israel Movement for Progressive Judaism in the past, and when he was so active to be involved in national Zionist institutions, and he created, together with Paula Elstein, Sichron Ali Braha, at same around the world, and then the, the, the important task of the uh, FSU immigrants to the Israel reality and future, and especially to our reform movement with the presence of our movement in FSU. But here with Hannah, we can hear how the FSU immigrants became New Orleans and now an integrated part of the Israeli society. Please, Hannah, share with us your testimony. Um, uh, probably it's too early to claim that I'm the integral part of Israeli society. I'm here only for four years. And I'm rather old, and it's very difficult for me to study Hebrew and whatever. So, and frankly speaking, I'm not highly well, ideologically, I was not highly ideological when I took this decision about uh, coming to Israel. But we came here with my husband because our daughters are here. It was their choice. Uh, but it happened that we uh, met uh, people with whom we studied Hebrew in uh, St. Petersburg, and they told us that there is a newborn uh, reformist uh, community led by Rabbi Gregory Kotler, and it, it's just the next street uh, where we lived at the time in uh, Ramat Gan. So we, uh, at the very beginning, we joined the community, and it was a really heartwarming story, and uh, um, uh, it was possible to study because we didn't know much about you know about uh, this context uh, here you know in in Russia and Soviet Union we are so we were sort of cut from tradition and it's a big big question and uh, uh, reformist uh, approach gave us an opportunity to gradually come come closer 
And uh, also, uh, there was a great uh, story last year when I was invited to join, uh, to take part in Butel seminar. And it was a wonderful uh, week with uh, reformist uh, Jews from uh, many parts of the world and even uh, with Butels themselves. And I remember um, uh, that somebody said that uh, we should live our values. So it's about connecting life and, you know, well, uh, religion, uh, what you have in your you know, head and how you embody it. So I, well, in Russia, I was uh, very much involved in, you know, trying to do um, something for democracy there. I was involved in adult education. I took part in international projects and I even try, tried to make my, you know, local community in my husband's house, very big house. Uh, and then I sort of failed. It was very, very difficult to, 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 um, to communicate with neighbors and to, to create a harmonious, you know, the environment. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, I had very many hopes that uh, we will have something like that here. So one part of it is the yes, reformist movement, and uh, I listened to the previous se session, uh, and I heard a lot of optimistic uh, things, which was the sort of you know encouraging. Encouraging, but on the other side, I see a lot of not so good things, and I'm a little bit uh, scared because they remind me Putin, Putin's Russia. I'm sorry. Uh, so that's here we are. Well, and also I'm trying, yes, to get involved. I was singing and hopefully I'll continue to sing in, in the choir of Beit Daniel. <laughs> I like singing. I like, you know, you timbre, you know, uh, singing prayers and uh, feeling, uh, feeling together with people. Uh, but that's it. I'm just, you know, <laughs> mainly busy with my little uh, granddaughter, but, but also involved in. If you have any question, you are very welcome. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Anna. For sure, we have some coming back to you with some of uh, the question of input of our friends that we invite all of our audience to share with us uh, some uh, uh, inputs, reflections, questions. I want maybe to come back to Nikki and to ask her about uh, his uh, her uh, position right now, like uh, Masquerade and Netzer movement. What is your inspiration and how do you think that new young reform leaders can take your role model and why? Uh, yeah, I feel that, uh, so first my position in Netza is about communicating with people from branches of Netza that exist all around the world in 15 different countries. So I have a very unique uh, position where I'm able to pass a message across. So I'm very glad to be able to do that now. I think that my message is for people to just come to Israel. And I think this connects to what I mentioned before about the unspoken and unteachable feeling that people get when they are in Israel. And it's a part of our movement that we don't necessarily talk about in the ideology or on paper, but um, feelings that, that a lot of people have. So I feel that uh, my experience has been incredibly special, um, incredibly supported by um, this amazing community, by Atsenu, by the World Union, um, by lots of different groups, by a number of families at Kola Nashama in Jerusalem. And um, my experience is just just do this. There's there's a group of people who are here to support you. Um, Net says here to support you. And and I feel like, why not? I think um, for me, jumping into this experience, uh, I, I almost didn't think about it very much. An opportunity became available and I jumped at that opportunity. And uh, my inspiration to other people is to just do the same and uh, to take those opportunities that life has given you, such as having these meaningful experiences in Israel. Okay, thank you, Nikki. Rebecca, you, you are example of how from uh, outside the reform movement, you find the, the, the way to be involved. Uh, and you are really part of a vibrant 
society Tel Aviv and around it's a cosmopolitic place that everyone wants to be and to belong. Yeah. How do you think that the reform movement can impact in the secular Israeli society? Yeah. And how we can answer the question about what is the one of the main issues in Zionist, how we can continue to transform the mm -hmm. Israeli society and to answer the question, how Jewish is the Israeli society? <laughs> That's a great question uh, with a lot of questions in it. I'll try to cover a few of them. Actually, you read my mind. I was thinking about something my husband says. I hope I won't get in trouble for saying this, but he likes to say that every Israeli is a reformed Jew. Like every secular Israeli is a reformed Jew. They just don't know it yet. And, um, <laughs> and I think that that's a, um, that might be where the opportunity is in Tel Aviv. I see it with a lot of my friends um, that are maybe more secular, but hold the same values that I do and that the reform movement holds, you know, um, which I think is what helped draw me into the movement. You know, the, the, the values were already there and they already aligned with what I had, but I didn't know. I, it was almost like a PR problem, right? I didn't know that this was a place that could be for me. So I think the challenge in a place like Tel Aviv, where there's a lot of different distractions and things that people can be doing um, is maybe finding really innovative programming, uh, different ways to connect to the Tel Aviv community um, that then can bring them in and show them what the movement has to offer. So I think it's all about community, finding, finding new ways to connect to different communities and not just young people, but, but everybody, families, elderly, everyone. And um, I think it's a really big challenge, Rabbi, <laughs> to, uh, your second part of your question um, about how to talk about um, the reform movement and how Jewish we are. And to be honest, I don't have a great answer. Um, I, I find that when people that are maybe from um, the orthodoxy ask me about it, I don't, I don't have a good answer yet. So maybe it's a conversation we need to be having more in the community so that I would know how to go and, and talk about it and have that conversation. Thank you, Rebecca, really interesting and challenging. Anna, tell us about what's happened right now in FSU. You, I suppose that you are connected to our communities in the former Soviet Union, that to be clear, we are all, always talking about FSU, but really we have three countries now. No, it's we, it's we, more, than, more than three countries. There are very different countries. And even okay. Bal Bal Baltic states are also FSU. And I have many Russian speaking friends from, from Latvia, from Litova. And uh, they are in quite a different way. But Russia, Russia now is uh, not falling apart, but I'm really scary looking at what is going on. Because yes, we know we, uh, you know we have these Russian pensions who are uh, tending to be zero because the exchange rate and whatever we used to uh, you know to buy food on Russian pension, but now it's uh, less and less. Okay. And, and how you you think that we can encourage uh, our friends from uh, FSU to come mm -hmm. into Israel? Uh, I don't know how because now it's a very strange time and well people who want to do it uh, they are, yes they are st they stay in lines to consulate uh, to the embassy but it's a very l long line and not an easy process so I'm not sure that well there are there are many people whom uh, to persuade because you know m most people are already done it but but uh, but but anyway, due to this hard situation, people yes, they just want to, ex to escape. So it's not you know the question of persuading. Uh, so it's uh, and now there are restrictions about you know well, our Israeli uh, internal ministry they uh, they are changing this uh, law about uh, coming back and uh, well about fourth gener generations uh, about the grandchildren of Jews. So they are making obstacles. It's not easy, and people who who want to do it, they are, they yes they they are trying, but let's see. Okay. So I know about Russia. Well, you know, if you heard about Belarus, what is going on here there? Ukraine is quite a different story. So well. But Russia, Russia is, is very scary now. Okay, thank you, Anna. But we will be open to do everything to help our brother and sister in, in this difficult situation. And also we 
we are aware that the uh, yeah. uh, COVID and the pandemic will be very stressed to all the world, all the Jewish communities around the world. And we really believe that the reform movement are ready to welcome every Jew that want to come to Israel in this difficult time. Also, that how we can really work like uh, uh, we have the, 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 these two uh, amazing examples of uh, Nikki and Rebecca. That means that we really face the Zionist and reform Judaism, not only because we welcome stressed people in disaster, that we want only to be uh, like uh, from poor and depressed people that come to Israel like the last choice. We need to work very hard to be the first choice to bring up to Israel, to the reform movement, a new wave of uh, Olim. That means we have huge opportunities and a really, really challenge. How we can transform the Israeli society to a more democratic, pluralistic, open-minded and diverse society. How we can share to all the Jewish world that the Jewish diversity is the richness of the Jewish tradition. And how we can close this gap between this wonderful country, a startup nation in technology, in economy, creative country, free country, but living in some ways in the, in the Middle Age with the extortion of the Orthodox monopoly without the rights to everyone, immigrants, Jewish and non-Jewish people, to really support and to empower the women in the Israeli society. That we know in the secular field, it's clear that they are leading, but in the religious and in the not separation between state and religion, we have a huge challenge. And we know that our new Olim, the young people and the reform women have here the future, the future of Israel to become again or Lagoim, a light among the nations. We really thank you, three of you, three wonderful women that share with us the personal story. And we invite all of you to continue with our program at the Artsenu Pre Congress and to congratulate all the representatives that do, to the World Science Congress to really support the Jewish values and the common vision of the Israel that it's coming to be the nation of all the Jewish people and a place to the reform Judaism to grow up. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Shalom everyone, good afternoon. I'm happy to be here with you today uh, in this short session called uh, Building Peoplehood. Uh, my name is Madar Bilik and I work in the Israel Diaspora Department of the IMPJ, the Israel Reform Movement. And today we are going to present to you uh, three of our programs, each one dealing with Jew uh, Jewish peoplehood from a different angle. Uh, so first, uh, I'm going to introduce to you a project called Yechdav, which is our school-to-school uh, -school twinning project, and then Project Domim, a project with, which connects uh, congregations in Israel to congregations around the world. And lastly, uh, one of our youth projects, which brings uh, youth from our congregations in Israel to URJ camps uh, across North America. Uh, so, first of all, a few words about our department, our Israel Diaspora Department, which was established about five years ago, uh, following our understanding in the IMPJ, our growing understanding, that the issue of Jewish peoplehood and the value of Jewish peoplehood is a core value of our movement in Israel, and it relates to almost every aspect of what we do here in our movement in Israel, uh, and it requires a separate uh, a separate department to deal with it. Um, so I want to present to you now uh, Reut Neumann, uh, which is our director our, of our education department, and she will talk to you about Project Yahdav. Hi, Reut. Hi, thank you, Smadar. Uh, so hello, everybody. My name is Reut Neumann. I am the director of the education department at the Israeli Reform Movement. And a big part of our department, we have the Yachtav, which is the Jewish Peoplehood Education, education Center. A big part of what we do, we have a school-to-school -school program between Israeli schools and Jewish schools abroad. That through the year, the kids are in touch through different projects that they're doing together. They exchange short videos, ID cards. Twice a year, we are doing video conference live when the kids actually can talk to each other live. Um, it depends on uh, time difference and everything. So sometimes it's Sunday afternoon Israel time, which is Sunday morning US time. If it's in England, it's um, it's easier on that end. Um, we have a variety of program. We start from fourth grade all the way to ninth grade. We have a program called Ma'agalim, which is circles of identity, where the kids are talking about their identity, about who they are, their family, their school, the city, the community, and then at the end, the Jewish people. It's for in between fourth grade to sixth grade. We also have a program called Bar and Bat Mitzvah with Friends. It's talking about the year of mitzvot. What's the responsibility that I have when I turn 12 or 13? Responsibility for myself, for my uh, family, for my country, and then for the Jewish people. We encourage the kids to pick a Tikkun Olam project, and then they report to each other about the project. Uh, we have a program called Green, which is about the environment and Tikkun Olam, and it's for middle school. School. And we also have a program called Kahol Avan, Blue and White, and it's more about Israel and the diaspora. Um, and in each program, as I said, the kids are in touch with each other. Uh, they have a curriculum that's been taught through the year and then a point through the year when they exchange different projects in doing the video conference live. Uh, so I think now we are ready to watch some of our videos. So Andy, please, if you can play the videos. Hi, my name is Judy Kropp, and I work at Temple Israel of Northern Westchester in Croton, New York. I've been working with the Yechdav people uh, for five years, I think now. This is my sixth, and it has just been wonderful for both me and the children I teach. It's, it's great for the kids to feel that the, the connection with Israel, uh, to do programs, to work on projects with the uh, Israeli classrooms and to write letters, to have, have Israeli pen pals. Um, I really, really enjoy getting the, you know, having the kids ask each other questions and seeing both how much they have in common and how much their lives may differ. Uh, this year, especially, I'm, I'm really grateful to have the Yechtav program because I'm teaching a class to older kids and it's an Israel education class. So it's really gonna be helpful to have the Israeli perspective. One thing that was especially exciting for me personally 
was a few years ago when I happened to be in Israel on a professional program that I made some time to visit with the different schools that I was working with at the time. And Reut, the director of Yachdav, took me all around to visit the people, to have lunch, uh, to, uh, it, what did they gave me, Mishloch um, Manot uh, for Purim, for the kids. Uh, it, it was amazing, amazing. And just getting to see people in real life that I had only known on a screen before was amazing. And it, it, it was such a special experience. I'll never forget it. And the kids actually couldn't believe I was there. They're like, whoa, you're Judy, who we see on the screen. Um, another thing that I wanted to add about the specialness of, Yechdav, of the Yechdav program is now during a pandemic, since, since we have these, this relationship long distance, that it, there's no break in the, in the connection because we were doing this long distance anyway. We were doing it on a, a WhatsApp or Zoom or whatever program, but the kids can still talk with each other and you know, get to know each other because we weren't regularly meeting in person anyway. Anyway, just wanted to add those, those few things about the trip and about uh, the connection, that we can still be connected even with this pandemic through the Yachdav program. So I really, really enjoy working with the Yachdav people. So thanks for this program. Um, as you can see at the video, um, even through COVID, uh, which was everybody stayed at home, it was easier for our kids to communicate because usually if it's a Sunday afternoon, some kids don't show up on Sunday school. Um, in Israel, kids need to come back to school on a Sunday afternoon. And this time everybody was at home. So we had full participant on both end uh, in Israel and mm -hmm. the schools abroad. And the uh, connection was very meaningful. They shared a lot of um, interest uh one kid show a book that she reads in english and then an israeli kid said oh my god i'm reading the same book in hebrew and she went to bring the book they exchange recipes uh we celebrated israel independence day um we did um, a ceremony together also israel memorial day that we hosted a mom that lost her son for one of the israeli war and she spoke both to the kids in israel and the kids abroad and it was very very meaningful for both of them so even with covid we made a lot of uh changes for an online learning, created different games, different projects. And of course, with the video conference, it's make everything easier and meaning, more meaningful for the kids to know that they are not alone and, um, and other kids on their age uh, in a different uh, country um, have the same interests, a lot of things they have in common, a lot of, uh, some of the things are different, but all of them stuck at home dealing with COVID. If we can play the next video. Thank you, Andy. Hi, I'm Einam. I'm a teacher at the Keshet School in Zichon Yaakov. I teach English and I also lead the Yechdav program in our school. We've been part of this program for over three years and we're very lucky to partner with Temple Israel in North Westchester, New York, and especially to be in contact with the students and Judy, which is wonderful. She was wonderful. Um, this program, Yechdav, is very special to us and it's meaningful to the kids in my school. It gives them an excellent opportunity to learn about Jewish children living outside of the state of Israel and actually to be aware of the fact that there are Jews, many Jews, that live outside of Israel. The students are very excited to be in contact with kids their age, to learn about them. Um, Something else that's very special about this program is it actually allows this, my students to think about what it means to be Jewish in Israel. If I'm born in Israel and I'm Israeli, what does that mean? What does it mean to be a Jewish Israeli? Learning about the Jews outside of Israel actually helps our students learn about their Jewish Israeli identity. We've done wonderful activities throughout the year. Um, besides video conferences and all the wonderful activities we do throughout the year, like pen pals, uh, we also 
had one year a special day uh, for to, to teach other kids at school about Jewish communities around the world. All the kids made special stations and actually exposed all the kids of the school to Jewish communities around the around the world. One of our other uh, highlights was having Judy come visit our school. The kids were so excited to actually meet her personally. We exchanged gifts. We made a wonderful painting out of fingerprints and gave it to them. And um, we hope to continue this wonderful, wonderful program. We love it, thank you. Uh, so as you can see, it's very meaningful, both of the kids in Israel and the kids abroad. For the Israeli kids, it's an opportunity to talk about their Jewish-Israel identity and what it means for them. And for the kids abroad, it's another opportunity to learn about kids in Israel, their own age, and what they are dealing with, what's their thoughts, what their hobbies, and they love it. So let's watch the last video, please. Uh, I think, Reut, we are short out of time to see that oh, okay. uh, short video. I'm sorry. But uh, everyone that's watching us, if you want to uh, hear more and uh, learn more about Yachdav, you are more than welcome to get in touch with us and with Reut. Uh, we need to go on to the next uh, project. So, Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Smadar. <laughs> so, uh, the next uh, uh, program that I'm going to present is called Domim Elai. And that is a program that I uh, I'm the director of, and this project uh, uh, brings together congregations, reform congregations from Israel with reform and progressive congregations around the world, uh, and we aim to build new partnerships, partnerships between these congregations and to help and cultivate uh, existing partnerships. Uh, the, the project started with a very unique uh, cooperation with the Ministry of Diaspora Affairs, and it was very special for us because it was a first time that uh, the IMPJ has been working officially uh, with with the ministry uh, in the Israel in the Israeli government. Uh, so now I want to present uh, two distinguished rabbis uh, whose uh, congregations have been partners for many many years. Uh, my friend Rabbi Nir Barkin from uh, Kehilat Yozma in Modi'in, who was actually head of the department that I'm working. He used to be the head of the department and now he's back in Modi'im with his congregation Yozma. And Rabbi Jonathan Blake uh, from Westchester Reform Temple in Sparzell, New York. Shalom rabbis, if you could please, we have a, uh, about 10 minutes to share uh, your experience from the partnership, uh, how your congregants experience the partnership, and also if you could uh, give us a few sentences about uh, how all of you experienced this during uh, the, the pandemic, during uh, COVID-19 on this last uh, few months? On to you. Thanks so much, um, Smadar. Uh, nice to see you, everyone. Um, hello to my good friend, Nir Barkin. Um, I'll, I'll just start a little bit and, and share how special it is that my congregation, Westchester Reform Temple in Scarsdale, New York, which is a large congregation, about 1,100 families, uh, just about 30 minutes outside of Manhattan, um, feels this uh, sibling connection with uh, Ki Latiozma in Modin. Um, and this is a partnership that pre-existed Domim alike, um, but that was fostered, cultivated, encouraged by the, by the program. Um, it goes back to my predecessor, um, Rabbi Rick Jacobs, who now, uh, as many of you know, is the president of the Union for Reform Judaism, and his personal connection and friendship with Rabbi Kineret Shirion, uh, who um, really was the founding rabbi of Yosma. Um, and because of that, they developed a kind of exchange of ideas and each other's presence. So when uh, Rabbi Kineret was in the United States, she would speak at our congregation and vice versa. Rabbi Jacobs was in Israel. Um, but you know, over a few uh, years, the partnership grew more substantial. Yozma was in a building phase and Nir can talk more about that. And Westchester Reform or WRT, my congregation was approached uh, and wanted to help support uh, financially, logistically, spiritually. I remember a project where uh, 
the rabbi suggested that you know we would partner on helping mothers and their daughters celebrate benot mitzvah together and our religious school and parents also teamed up and we had a lot of shared exchange of ideas uh, and helped to to bring that program to life uh, for me the most special moment of connection came in 2009 our congregation had commissioned the writing of a Torah scroll uh, in 2007, which we hoped to, uh, you know, use for B'nai Mitzvah and regular Shabbat and holiday worship. And um, we therefore had an extra Torah scroll, one that we wanted to donate to a congregation in need. And Yozma was the perfect partner congregation. Uh, so in 2009, um, my dear friend and colleague, our teacher, and a member of our congregation, Rabbi Aaron Pankin, who was at the time uh, on faculty at Hebrew Union College, would go on to become the president of Hebrew Union College. And it so happens that his wife, Lisa Messenger, was our temple president at the time. He flew a uh, coach on a 747 uh, LL jet with a Torah scroll as his seat partner. Um, and he took that Torah scroll and delivered it to Yozma. And I've seen these pictures of the little children rejoicing as the Torah scroll arrived in October of 2009. And then in December, I led a family trip to Israel with members of my congregation, and we formally dedicated the scroll. And I would say every two to three years or so, we take a group trip to Israel. And uh, our partnership with Yozma means that Yozma is always on the itinerary, a conversation with Rabbi Nir Barkin, um, with members of the congregation. They, we are shown the most extraordinary hospitality uh, whenever we're there. It feels like we're among family. And I know that Domim has been you know, actively encouraging this partnership to continue. So I look forward to many years of our congregations being uh, sisters and brothers to one another. Thank you very much, Rabbi Blake. And on to you, Rabbi Balkin. Shalom, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are around the world. Um, it is a little bit afternoon here in Israel, and, uh, and uh, the beautiful day is uh, kind of uh, making us feel a little better with what's happening during the last eight months. Um, I would like to, to uh, start from, from the end and go backwards, as Rabbi Blake did. And, and for me, the end is uh, provoking the verse pro from Proverbs saying, it's a better to have a neighbor nearby than a relative far away. I would like to reverse this phrase. I'd like to say that it is better to have a brother in Westchester than a nearby neighbor. And um, when we walk in the... In the um, in the, in the darkness these days, um, I don't worry. Not only that I don't worry because I feel that God is escorting, escorting us all in, in our sacred work that we do as volunteers and professionals, but most importantly, uh, I would like to, to point out uh, Rabbi Blake, Jonathan and, and, his, and his congregation by saying we're not walking alone because our brothers and sisters through the domain platform uh, is walking alongside with us uh, through this difficulty. Um, we can we can put anchors to what I was just saying, but if if only that you will have in your mind that we in Israel, and I guess both both here and in the United States, Canada, and and and, and around the world, people don't feel that they're alone when they walk this darkness because of the brothers and sisters that they have overseas, and and I relate to to uh, Jonathan as, 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 a, as a close brother of mine. Um, I, I try to call him Jonathan here or Rabbi Blake, but usually I would call him Yoni. Uh, so, so for me, Yoni and I are walking in this darkness together. Yoni has gone through some very difficult obstacles throughout the last three years with a lot of funerals and tragedies in his congregation. I try to be there for him and, and as he is for me. I'd like to mention four anchors for us that Domim allows us to do, and, and both Rabbi Blake and I are, are implementing at our congregations. First will be the place. The place in, in our tradition is also the name for God, Hamakum. So for us, or for me, Jonathan's place 
and and uh, the name the, the place that uh, Westchester Reform Temple is at with all its beauty and 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 uh, inspiration for me the place is something that I can relate to so you have to visit your brother's synagogue in order to be there one thing which makes us very close is the place second thing as I've mentioned before is the inspiration anything that Rabbi Blake Blake's post on the social media uh, from from choosing his the color of his glasses to more importantly uh, more, more importantly the, the the beautiful sermons that that he's giving is an inspiration for me the music so we have the place we have the inspiration we have the music we change music when, when rabbi blake and his team comes to yozma they listen to the original music originally was written by bali shirion but now is written by Barry's son or any other Israeli musicians, they take it with them, as we do when we come back from our visits at Temple at, at Westchester Reform Temple. And above all is the awe. Um, whenever I visit Westchester Reform Temple, I feel the awe. I feel the, the Yilat Shamayim, the, the feeling of, 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 of really the God's presence. And for me, it's, it's a very strong... Um, atmosphere that uh, uh, escorts me throughout my work when I go back here. So, as I said, I'm reversing the Proverbs uh, 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 verse and say, it's better to have a further, a far away uh, a brother like uh, Yoni than a nearby neighbor like my next door neighbors. Uh, I just want to... Thank wanna... you, Rabbi. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, no, I just want to add that I think that for, look, the members of my congregation, until you go to Israel, Israel is abstract, right? I think everyone knows that. And from an educational standpoint, the get, best way to get people to connect to Israel is to take them to Israel. And the same thing goes when, you know, if I tell them from the Bima that it's really important to support the growth and development of synagogues in Israel, because I believe that the best way to grow our reform movement, in particular in Israel, is to support synagogues. And of course, synagogues in Israel that are reformed don't Count, can't count on government support the way that Orthodox synagogues can. But the concept doesn't become real until they have an image of what a progressive, what a non-Orthodox synagogue looks like. And that's why I think that our partnership with Yozma is so important because my congregants recognize that, oh, they have a synagogue away from home whenever they go to Israel um, that they can really think of as their own. Um, so it personalizes the experience. It puts a human face on it. They realize that their rabbis, their leaders, their participants, their youth are all just reformed Jewish, you know, active, thriving families like we are. And I think there's been this wonderful sense that uh, that we're really cut from the same cloth. For, for us, Ma, we have. Uh, we, near, we have to. I'm sorry, we have to move <laughs> on to the the last. Bit. The last program that I want to present. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Smadar. No, we Nir and I just like seeing each other, so we're gonna. <laughs> I, think, I think we're gonna it's have. Good you have another week. opportunity for that. Thank you for allowing us to stay connected. Thank you very much, everybody, and enjoy the session. Thank you for the, the, the partnership. Stay and safe. And I'm everyone. also happy to say that we have uh, Rabbi Rick Jacobs here watching us, and also uh, we got some comments from Miriam Perlman in. Uh, in Toronto and Robert Lee in Paris, both saying that they are also partners of uh, Congregation Yozema. And since we have only 50, only 50, about 50 congregations here in Israel and some thousands and more across the world, uh, most of our Israeli congregations have uh, one or two or three uh, partnerships that they, uh, uh, and uh, congregations that they work with, with around the world. Uh, the last program that I want to present is a program with our youth, and I want to invite uh, David Bernstein, the Director of uh, the Development and Overseas Relations in the IMPJ, uh, to present the last project. David, on to you. You are mute, David. We can't hear you. Oh, there you go. Thank you so much, Smadar, and all our other guests. And thank you, Artsenu, and all our movements around the world for your support. I'm personally a product of the North American Reform Movement camping system. I grew up for, the, for 15 years in a row before I made Aliyah at Camp Swig, today Camp Newman, 
Um, there's other people evidently in the audience who went to the same camp as me, like Rick Jacobs. Um, and it's something that I that made me who I am. But one of the conclusions we came to about 20 years ago or more in the Israel reform movement is that the camp experience is a wonderful atmosphere for connecting Israelis, Israelis with Jewish American counterparts from our movement. And the situation of living together for a few weeks, a month, can have a profound, profound transformative experience on both sides. Um, we have it with our camp counselors who go to our camps, but we have a special program in cooperation with the URJ where every summer we send around 40 Israeli kids from the reform movement, ages 12 through 17, to a number of the URJ camps where they're completely integrated into the camp program. I have a special opportunity for me personally now to introduce a, par a person who participated in that program, Daria, who you'll meet in a moment. I, it's especially for me special because Daria is a member of my own Israeli congregation, Birkat Shalom at Kibbutz Gezer. And I spent many, many, many hours convincing, not her, she wanted to go immediately, but convincing her mother uh, to let her go. And I think you'll hear wonderful things about this experience and what it means to the connection between kids from our movement and kids from movements in North America. So. Daria. Thank you, David. Hello, my name is Daria. I'm 16 years old, living in Moshav Azaria, Israel. I'm very excited to be here, to be given this opportunity to tell you about my camp experience. When I had my bat mitzvah, my family and I joined the reform community Brikat Shalom in Kibbutz Gezer. It was an immediate connection, the perfect combination between religious tradition and modernization. Luckily for me, I met David Bernstein, who is also a member of the Berkat Shalom congregation. Every time we met, David told me all about the UR Jacobs and tried to convince me, and especially convince my mother, that I should go. Finally, my mother was convinced, along with the feeling that this is the right step for me. The departure to the camps is being made by delegations, and for this purpose, we went through many tests and preparations. I was chosen to go to Kutz Camp in Warwick, nearby New York City, with five more delegation members that are still very good friends of mine nowadays. In the preparation, we learned about Israel history and about our place in the world as Jews, about the right way we think Israel should be represented. We learned about patience, acceptance, and practice struggles and difficulties through simulations that we made up. We paid a lot of attention to the place we're going to visit, the town, the culture. We even made an oral presentation about it. We learned some of the prayers and even learned some songs and dances from a professional guitar player. We learned about each other, about our dynamic in the group, and about making this journey as a group. We studied so many things from this whole preparation. Though, the most important thing I, it made me do is think. Think about my national identity, about Judaism, and about the impact this journey might cause. First day at camp was challenging. I remember walking into the lobby, reading the sign with the camp's motto, Welcome Home, and wonder how could I probably ever feel related to this place? Everything is so different here. This is exactly how I felt. Everything is so different here. But still, my curiosity was bigger, and I was stubborn enough to explore and know more about this culture. Kutz unfortunately closed last year, but it was a very special place. The camp itself was dedicated to the issue of leadership, and every camper chose an immersive to measure in. I chose action and advocacy. We learned about being an activator, changing the world, using our voice to listen, learn from other people, appreciate the knowledge of others. However, fun was a big part from camp experience as well. We had parties, we swam at the pool, climbed the tower, went for a day trip in New York City, exactly like in the summer camps American movies. Everything was perfect. All of those things are in me and they will always stay with me. The memories and more important, the people. 
the URJ camps can change lives. They changed my life and as well as some of my friends' lives who are now made, planning to make an Aliyah. Kutz was special because within only five weeks, it made people who were complete strangers for me to my family. We did everything together, eat, dance, pray, sleep. Kutz was a place that all it required from you is to be yourself. It told me what Avat Chinam, free love, is really easy. Needless to say, after two days, I felt it was my home because home is not, it's not an actual place. Home, home is a feeling. Judaism is such a significant common ground. We're all the same, no matter where we come from. Kutz showed me what it is to be Jewish abroad. One of the first things that caught my attention is the fact that everybody was wearing a necklace with the Star of David. When I asked why, they told me it is because they can't wear them back at their home environment. They just can't in terms of real danger. Over time, I got to know these people deeper and deeper and understand the real affection of anti-Semitism on their lives. It is not easy to be a Jew. Just from our tradition, you can understand that we have suffered a lot and we will suffer more. Though the most difficult difficulties are given to the strongest people. To be a Jew is a right, and we will not give it up. Kutz also taught me the strength and meaning of Israel. I should be proud of being Israeli, speaking the holy language. Furthermore, every Jew in the world should know Israel is a home for us, and it always will be. Hope to see you all in Israel. Toda Rabba. Toda Daria. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. I'm so excited and, and, and happy to, to learn, you know, from the, the, the young generation what they experienced from uh, their engagement with, with World Jury. Uh, we had a really short segment today. Um, I regret that we didn't have more time to hear from all of you. But thank you so much, Ruth, and the teachers from Yehdav. Uh, thank you, Rabbis Barkin and Blake. Thank, thank you, David and Dalia. Uh, this has been uh, very exciting for me to hear uh, all of your experience. And thank you, all of, uh, all of you at home, for uh, joining us. We really hope and pray that this pandemic ends soon so we can see you all face to face. Goodbye.